Now, I'm no stranger to these deity challenges. In fact, it always seems that some of my favorite challenges are in some horrible starting location, now founding our first city until we turn 150 or so, or even starting in the Stone Age while our neighbors have fancy iron swords. And this one is no different. To make this challenge, I booted up World Builder and generated some random small continents map. I then proceeded to live life on the edge and enable the still in development advanced mode. Deleted all the preset AIs and added a bunch of random ones. I then searched far and wide for the perfect one tile island to set my spawn location. I was surprised by how many one tile island locations there were available. Look at them, it is absolutely crazy. There's at least 10 or 15 on just one small map. And then it hit me. I found home. Well, not that home. It's way too close to the mainland. Let's go a little further out. We finished researching sailing and our builder. We sent it off to explore after we improved the one tile we're actually working on. It's important to find other civilizations or city states while doing these DD challenge to get the additional gold per turn and to sell your luxury resources. We go north and find a desolate island filled with stone surrounded by a kelp forest. I then went a bit further north and found a quaint little tribal village. And we knew we had to go there. Then it happened. The thing only of legend, something that I've only heard about from random posts on Reddit. I found a relic. I was so flabbergasted that I fell out of my chair, knocked my head in my bed frame since my bed is right next to my office chair. Don't judge me, the commute from work from home is still atrocious. Lost conscious for a bit and woke up and yes, it was true. We actually did find a relic. Four turns later, we unlocked our pantheon only to find religious sentiments has already been taken. But it probably would have been good for us anyway since we still have, let's see here, 55 turns until we can actually embark the settler. So we took God of the Sea. I then bought our first boat, proceeded to build another one, and knocked down shipbuilding to 22 turns. 500 turns later, we unlocked shipbuilding. Entered into the class era as a normal agent selected monumentality, and scouted a nice island to the north with a great campus location. I finally got a settler up there, made landfall, only to realize that we still haven't unlocked ironworking yet, so we couldn't even place a campus where the jungle is. I then proceeded to wait four more turns until we found our second city on turn 58. No big deal, which is a, it's a new record for this one tile island DD challenge. But now it was time to stop messing around. Now that we can embark units, it's time to catch up with a game plan and take over some of the AI cities in order to come back. But I noticed that we could actually buy a horseman unit from a barber cabinet to the north. So it was time to sell a relic that really wasn't doing much for us anyways. Since we don't have Heroes and Legends mode enabled, and we're not going for tourism or religious victory. The Mind Empire will give us a ridiculous 39 gold per turn. So after quickly checking if we could actually buy back the relic for cheaper from the Mind Empire, which we cannot, thank you Sid Meier, I came up with a new game plan. That's right, the Mayan cities look pretty weak. Let's change technologies, go for horsemen, buy a couple from the barbarian encampment, and take over their cities. I started assembling units near their empire. They had no idea that we were planning attack. Then I realized that we had two envoys that could become suzerain of a city-state. So I just looked at the two city-states that were north of the Mayan empire and picked the one of the highest levy military costs and what? Our dreams have come true. We went from two horsemen army to an army with five men at arms. Only 900 gold for this glorious army. The Mayan Empire was toast. I proceeded to sell all the horses that I bought, stockpiling for the horsemen rush, which didn't happen, and then moved my new army to the Mayan's border. It was time to declare war. I held back for one turn, so they throw their army at me, and it worked like a charm. I then positioned my units around theirs and started to roll over their whole army. The next turn, I had their city surrounded and it was time to attack. The first two cities went down quick, with our superior naval forces attacking to the west and the insane melee units attacking the capital. It only took four turns to take two of their cities. I then frantically looked for a relic, only to see that it was destroyed in the great siege of the Mayan capital. Furious, I set my sights on the next two cities. Saw that they built walls on one of their cities, so I did buy a battering ram. No big deal. And then it happens. I see their garrison defense strength go up a ton and a pikeman in the mist. Game on. Unfazed, I know what to do. I quickly move my quadrums to the north to take out this warrior, move my men at arms to the south, then promote my other men at arms 
and took out their archer. I frantically tried to take over their city to the east as soon as possible so I could move more units to help in the front of the west. They managed to kill one of my men at arms, but I brought in reinforcements. I then took out their pikemen and then tried to take out their walls. Our military endeavor to the east was pretty quick. We took over their city and we started building a nice plus two campus, which actually helps us a lot. And then moved all these units to the west to help out with this pretty strong city now. And then I did it. I took out the rouse and surround their city so it could not heal. Now I can relax for a couple of turns to heal up my units, but no, they built another pikeman in their city and the garrison defense strength went up to 52. I was so in trouble. Thinking it was all or nothing, I still attacked their city and put some weaker units as bait near the city, hoping that the pikemen will leave the city defenseless. And success. <laughs> Do you think I care about some horsemen that I bought for 193 gold? I positioned my units around the city, attacked, and moved my horsemen in position so that the city would still be under siege if one of them died. They took out one of my horsemen, but it was too late. We captured the city and now it was time to peace out. Let's take everything they own and leave them with one city. Now that our first empire was conquered, it was time to set our sights on something else, something bigger. Who should we attack next, Khmer, who is on an island west of our newly acquired cities, or France, who is even further west, somewhere in this fog of war, or Canada, who even knows where they're at, or the Cree. Oh, the Cree. They're probably our biggest threat right now since they're so close to our start and they have a pretty strong science output. But it's time to focus on our strengths. Let's build some unique harbors, build lighthouses and traders so to get additional envoys in our city-states thanks to the Owl's secret society. We then found the Niter Motherlode right next to her capital. Since our future looked like it was gonna include a lot of naval warfare, I quickly switched up to finish a settler in her capital in order to claim this explosive wonderland before any greedy AI is found in a random city 100 tiles away from their territory. We then sold our great work of writing for 20 iron for where we were going. We didn't need any books. We changed our policy card to get double envoys and upgraded one of our warriors to get four free envoys. Seven turns into the next era. We've already secured a gold mage and it was time to get greedy. And when I mean greedy, I'm getting super greedy. We could buy this great engineer of faith, build a lighthouse and Colossus in our capital, and become suzerain of a couple of city-states pretty easily. But my greed knows no bounds. Let's wait until the next era so all this additional era score doesn't go to waste. Then the Cree, oh, the Cree came along and quickly thwarted our plan and they bought our great engineer. Now I know our next target. We entered a golden age. Thankfully, almost every other AI fell into a dark age. We selected reformed coinage, so our primary source of income will stay strong when we're at war with the world. Proceeded to spend our envoys while we still had the diplomatic league policy card enabled, and then it hit me. We can get two great people that will increase our trade rail capacity. We proceeded to buy Marco Polo, since a great admiral will come next to her anyways, and use our traders who get additional envoys in the city-states. And it paid off big time. <laughs> we unlocked Merchant Republic and put Merchant Confederation in for a whopping 36 gold per turn on turn 136. We already have 36 envoys. Our science broke 100 for the first time. We were turning this game around. The last Mayan city fell to loyalty pressure and was going to be mined in nine turns. We unlocked square rigging and upgraded our units and proceeded to make our way to Kree's empire. Then it hit me. They were the only other civilization in a golden age. Not only a golden age, but a heroic one. Keeping their cities was going to be tough. So I quickly did a U-turn and made my way towards Khmer. Turn 145, we were raking in 266 gold per turn to supply our army. Got Mayan's last city due to loyalty pressure and declared war on Khmer. This was going to be fun. First we attacked the city on the island, changed up some policy cards to deal up with the future loyalty pressure, and took it over in three turns. Loyalty was a whopping negative 19.3. Let's just say they were a little upset that we took over their city. They even tried to have the whole world declare war on us, but they were the only ones that voted yes. The other AIs knew not to mess with us. Our superior naval forces took over Khmer's second city two turns later, 
and we already had additional naval units on the way to their third city. And then I saw it. The Great Lighthouse. They stole it from us, and it was time to get it back. I started buying additional units with gold. Gold. Even built a mausoleum in the meantime to show off a little bit to the other AIs. And then took over their third city. After scouting our enemy's land, I switched up to research bombards, and I started to stockpile siege units with faith. And another one. And took over Khmer's capital. We moved our units west towards France's borders. Just like the Mayans, they also had no idea we were going to attack. Joke's on them, though, says I declared war in the same turn. We took it over a few turns later and then set sight on their capital. I was unsure if we could reach it by sea and after some scouting, we cannot. We we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. It's at that point that I realized that the barbarians were on our side. Just completely decimating France's army to the north, I had a quick existential crisis wondering... Are we the baddies? But that was quickly subdued after taking over their next city to the north, east of Paris. Now we had a clear shot towards their capital. I then got greedy again and took over Khmer's last city for five air score and secured another golden age and got Charles Darwin. Losing a little bit of science, we used him suboptimally for the greater good and upgraded our musket men and started making our way towards Paris. Only four turns until the next era and we started using our bombards on Paris. Two turns later, we were fully in position. Paris and Marseille were all ours. We entered into a new era. Canada was already upset with us and selected reform the coinage. Two arms is overrated anyways. I scouted to the west, looking at our next target. The strength of their walls. I see that the Cree already has a lot of ironclads already. We switched up our research for battleships and a few turns later, our barbarian encampment spawned where we can actually buy a battleship. We bought that battleship and went to war with Kanda with their 400 fortification health walls. This was going to be a while. Three turns later, we actually unlocked battleships. Upgraded two of our units, put in some crazy policy cards. Merchant Confederation gives us 54 gold per turn. And Colonial Taxes gives us a whopping 62.8 gold per turn. That is the highest I think I've ever had that card. But then, Canada brought out the big guns. After spending some time raiding the local library and university, I took them out. Battleships made the world of difference, but then Canada brought two more insane units down from the north. Look at that! Oh, I knew I didn't stand a chance, so I just ignored them to focus on their capital. And then I used their own defenses to take out the warrior. We then took over another city from Canada so we can fix this loyalty issue and have a city in the border of the Kree's empire. Time to focus on the Kree. This was going to be no joke with their massive number of ironclads and 97 garrison defense strength in cities. We had to prepare a little bit. Then I did something so complex, so insane, that I've only seen the extremely sophisticated AI do this. I bought a battleship that I knew was going to be trapped inside this lake. Turn 192, we declared war and started bringing in our naval forces, our recently upgraded artillery, and observation balloon the landlocked battleship was already paying off taking out an ancient era unit then i saw it a nuclear submarine these things are dangerous knowing that our actual demise was coming i quickly took the encampment in order to move artillery to the front lines we took their city out to the north and then i saw it the nuclear submarine moved closer to our battleship fleets this is our chance we moved in position one attack two attacks three attacks it wasn't enough the sub quickly retreated the next turn and another one appeared. With the help of our newly acquired city, we were able to take this one out. Turn 198, we started our attack on Kree's capital with our three artillery armies to the north and our clutch battleship from the lake. And two turns later, we were victorious. Thanks for watching.